Welcome, Greek U Nation, to episode number 379 of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Ayalon, CEO of Greek University. I'm a speaker and an author. Our third book is called From Letters to Leaders, Leveraging Your Fraternity or Sorority Experience to Land Your Dream Job. So go and pick up that book today on Amazon. We call these episodes the Fraternity Foodie Podcast because there is nothing like great food to bring college students together. Fun fact, I am a big fan of using assessments. I've done multiple assessments with both of my high school age kids, and I've had professionals interpret the results for us for three reasons. Number one, it gives them direction in their careers. Number two, it gives them language to use on college essays and in interview situations. And that's especially effective when the person who is reading it or sitting across the table is familiar with those assessments. You're gonna separate yourself from the crowd. And number three, it helps them to develop better teams in college and in the workforce, knowing what each other's strengths are. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit more about assessments and how that can help you. So our next guest as president and CEO of Personalysis, Adrian McDunn, continues the legacy of mentor and Personalysis founder, James R. Nolan, to support fulfillment and success in all areas and all aspects of individual endeavor. Believing that work can offer the opportunity to pursue purpose and passion, Adrian empowers clients to contribute their best self and lead more meaningful lives. Minnesota roots and a global heart. She is a dog shelter volunteer despite her cat's objection to dog smell. She considers black loose leaf tea a transcendent experience, and she will always make time for her passion project, which is coaching supervision. Welcome to the show, Adrian. Thank you so much. What a wonderful introduction. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I'm available. If you want to take me on stages across the country, I'll introduce you all over the country. I okay, no you've got it. you got it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your undergraduate experience. I love talking to our guests about what that was like, and you decided on the University of Minnesota. So I'm just curious, what made you choose Minnesota? Well, I grew up in Minnesota. I grew up in a very, very small town in Minnesota, but it had two colleges, Carleton and St. Olaf. And while they're excellent colleges, you don't go to the, to, you're a townie, so you don't go there. And besides that, I needed a bigger horizon. Everybody knew my name. Everybody understood everything about me from, you know, the time I was knee high. So I, I craved an experience where I could have a broader population and Undergraduate at University of Minnesota is 50,000 students. Uh, postgraduate is 16,000. So I, I really became anonymous and had learned how to swim in that territory. Wow, that's fantastic. I also, I went to a large school. I went to the University of Buffalo in Buffalo, New York. They have 30,000 undergraduates. I tell you what, I felt lost in 30,000. I don't know how you manage 50,000. I mean, it's just, it's, it's difficult for our brains to comprehend and get your arms around it when the campus is so large. But certainly if you're from a town where everybody knows your name and you want something a little bit different, University of Minnesota will give it to you. That's, that's <laughs> me jumping into the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, no question about that. And you know, what's great about you is, is that early on in your career, you had the ability to really listen to people and build connections among the coworkers, even some of the most difficult employees. And I'm sure that our listeners want to be able to build connections quickly in the mm. workplace. So what's your secret? Well, I happen to be really fascinated by people and their stories. So I have always had a love of that. I, my first, um, uh, when I went to, to college, my first major was theater and it was all about exploring people and, and why they do what they do and who they are. And so I, I really lean in to uh, the interesting elements of people. And that has allowed me to facilitate uh, people engaging, people getting along together to find common ground. Uh, I think I, you know, it's, it's part of my nature, but it's also a, a skill I developed to find the places where we can connect uh, as, as individuals with either our interests or person to person. And, and that brings people together. 
Yeah, what a beautiful talent you have. And it all starts with listening, of course. I wish that there was more people like you. I really, really do. I mean, today, it just seems like everything is so divisive. And, you know, from politics to, you know, social media to television, I mean, whatever it is, it's just so divisive. And I think if we just start listening to each other, I think, you know, we can make some progress here. I totally agree. And when I first came to personalysis, uh, I had had a, a career uh, with large consulting houses, uh, worked all over the, the world. Uh, and, you know, the, bringing multiple cultures together on a project it was, was always really challenging and exciting, but challenging. Mm. And when I came to personalysis, I went, oh my God, if I had had this tool earlier, in my career, what could I have done? And how how much faster could I have helped people to come into collaboration or understanding or just relationship? Um, because you know, the tool that we use, it really brings us down to the human level. As you say, you know, beyond politics, beyond anything else, you are human mm -hmm. and I am human. And you have a way of negotiating and working in the world as do I. And if I am open and curious about how you do that, then I can learn how we can work together. And that's basically how, how we help people. Wow, this is the perfect tool at the perfect time. Now, as president and CEO of Personalysis, now you're continuing this legacy of mentor uh, and founder of Personalysis, James R. Noland. And you believe that you can help people contribute their best self at work, lead more lead, uh, meaningful lives. Talk to us a little bit about how this tool, Personalysis, how does it do that? Well, it all starts with the individual experience. Mm -hmm. So a person takes the assessment and they get their individual report. And hopefully, the way that they choose to engage with us, they will get, as you had mentioned, someone sitting down with them and reviewing their report to help them gain the most out of it. Particularly if it's if it's a, a first time thing for you, you don't know about assessments, you really don't, and maybe social sciences isn't your thing. So, so you don't really understand the frameworks that we're talking about. So having somebody help you understand it and also um, help you see the value in it see the great strengths that you have. Uh, we come at this with a, an incredibly positive and uplifting approach. So many people are so hard on themselves. They wanna know well, what, should I be different? Uh, is there something wrong with me? Uh, particularly if they have a style that shifts and changes in its use of behavior, uh, which is extremely common. And it can be an incredibly valuable resource. But if you don't understand that, you might, wonder why sometimes you're this way and sometimes you're that way and, and not have a way of making sense of that. So we start with self-awareness and then we uh, oftentimes other people around that person is profiled, whether it's in a, a fraternity or whether it's in a, a corporation or a family setting. And then it gives us a point of comparison. And that's an excellent way to know more about yourself. So first you get a framework on how do I do this? Can I relate to it? Does this make sense and how I see myself in the world? And then I look at you and I say, oh, you do this like me, but you do something else that I don't tend to do. And, and through that, I can learn, yeah, I really don't do that. And maybe there's some value in, in doing that. So when I need that kind of resource, what can I do? I can call Michael. I can talk to Michael and leverage that great strength. Or you can always learn uh, competencies. Uh, you can always cover a, a kind of behavioral resource that you don't have. Of course you can, but it's always going to take an effort. So then, so then we look at the individual, we look at comparison, and then we look at teams. And when teams come together, they often form a collective pattern. And so the dominant behaviors tend to lead the team. And that may not always be helpful. So we help people figure out when is it helpful and when isn't it helpful and what can we do about it? Ooh, 
Really nice. And, you know, getting a professional to sit down with you and help you to interpret the results, I think is really critical to any of these assessments. You know, I actually took this assessment, this person analysis last week. I'm going to be sitting down with Colleen, one of your coworkers, later uh, today, and I can't wait to hear more about the assessment and how that's going to help our team at Greek University. So I'm really excited about it. And, you know, I'm willing to bet the farm that you know other personality tests that are out there. And so I'm wondering, how does personalysis measure up against some of the other personality tests that are out there? Well, my opinion is that anything that helps you gain greater self-awareness is valid and should be celebrated. Uh, I think that degree is, is where the assessment focuses. Does it focus on team? Does it focus on decision-making style or communication style? Our founder really wanted to look at a holistic view of a person. And, and so at the time when he was creating this in the in the 60s, uh, there weren't many assessments that took that perspective. In fact, there were none that took that perspective. And so what, what we do is we look at human drives and motivations and we capture three of them. The work that energizes you, the work you love to do that, that brings your heart on, online. We look at your social style, how you think you should interact with other people when you're consciously interacting with other people. And then we look at how you take care of yourself. How do you set yourself up for success? What creates confidence? How do you make decisions that you can really live with? What's truly important to you? And so we look at those three motivations, and then we look at the four traits of behaviors. And these four traits of behaviors are very common. In fact, I think Aristotle was the first person that we know of that mentioned them. He, he related um, the people that were like fire. He related them to the elements. He said there were people like fire. And in our system, that's, that's red. We capture that with a color. Uh, there are people that are like wind that are flexible, fluid, can kind of get along and move around everybody and get, you know, manage the, the space. And there are people like water, where you can see the surface, but there's great depth. And then there are people like earth, solid, predictable. You know, the mountain is here. Tomorrow, you're not going to wake up and have the mountain over there. So you know, the people that are, are rock solid. So we take those four behaviors and we measure them in each of the motivations, each of the three motivations. So the, the important thing is that there are times when you will, um, let me use extroverted and introverted as an example, because a lot of people understand that framework. Mm -hmm. So there are people that know that there are times when they feel really extroverted. It's easy to be around people. They love it. They're energized by it. And then there are times when, you know, they hope that nobody sees them getting into their house because they really don't want to talk to anybody, maybe at the end of the day after being at work all day. And so they, they see that there are times when they're, they're, they're more available to the world and times when they're, they need to pull back uh, and be more thoughtful. And, and so we knew that about people. And so Jim really wanted to capture that whole element of a person and to recognize that that shift and change could be very valuable, but it could also be internally very confusing. So that's how we distinguish ourselves from the other tools that are out in the marketplace. And we were created by a university professor, who Jim Nolan, who wanted to help his university students find the right job fit. And Jim was uh, ahead of his time. There's no question about it. And, you know, what's really fascinating is that it's more relevant than ever person analysis because, you know, with Gen Z, you know, they're constantly comparing themselves to others, wondering if they're on the right track or not. So they're always peering over the fence saying, is the grass greener over here or am I actually on the right path? So this is just the perfect assessment at the perfect time because Gen Z is all about it. So, so kudos. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we've had a rich history. We're almost 50 years old. And uh, and people, when they when they can understand the system and they, they see the framework and they keep coming back over and over again, our business is built primarily on referrals. We're blessed that way. 
Yeah, that's fantastic. And I know you spend a lot of time with senior executives, with board members for in-depth coaching sessions. And these sessions now will help the C-suite understand what their personalities are, which in turn leads to a more productive work environment. Now, let's assume just for argument's sake that I'm a blue, okay? I'm the visionary. I don't know. It's just a hunch. So how can I create a more productive work environment for me and for my team of 23 speakers? Okay. So I understand where you're coming from, but I'm going to put a caveat on front of that just so that the audience understands it. So we measure three different maps of personality and we measure all four colors. So there isn't really a person who is blue, just blue. Right. So let's for the sake of argument here say you've got strong blue characteristics in all three of your personality maps Correct. and you're a leader yes. okay so you the the blue is not just a visionary but the underlying element of blue of the quality of the behavior of blue mm -hmm. is deep curiosity mm -hmm. and that curiosity drives them to try and understand what are you saying what does it mean where are we connecting? What else could we be talking about? So, so blue really leans into that understanding piece. As a leader, a blue will treat people more individualistically because they value uniqueness and they will see that you are not like the, this other person that, on the team and not like the other people on the team. So blue leaders tend to have a more unique approach uh, in, in the ways that they empower, in the ways that they onboard, uh, in, in the general way in which they negotiate the team. And that's usually different from most organizations because they're, they're, you know, it's one size fits all. This is the way we treat people in onboarding. This is what we do for people uh, in, in uh performance reviews mm -hmm. and so a blue leader thinks differently and and is will apply different ideas and different uh, approaches to fit the situation mm -hmm. the other thing uh, you mentioned visionary so uh, the blue mind uh, looks at consequences and so they have a more strategic perspective and blue is a has a time frame. It it goes across all time frames. So it it can look at the present situation. It can imagine a future. It can compare that to the past, and pull all that together to to create a, a direction. Well, that's really helpful, and it does perfectly describe who I am. I love the uniqueness of everybody on the team. Um, I think it makes me better because ultimately they can show me things and point things out that I can't see. And mm -hmm. so I value that tremendously. And, uh, you know, I think that's why we've been so successful over time. And I also think, you know, that Gen Z, you know, they really appreciate that um, because they each have their own brand. And so they kind of expect that I'm going to know what they're all about and treat them um, individually in terms of what their goals are and help them achieve those things. So I'm always asking, you know, what is motivating you? What do you want out of this experience? And I think they value that because I do treat them all uh, individually. I don't think that everybody on my team is motivated the same way. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I just want to say that um, that the quality of yellow is also uh, a quality that uh, relates really easily and well with with people mm -hmm. and is the facilitator. I have yellow all the way through my style. <laughs> and so the, the ability to bring people together to find common ground, uh, that is a quality of, of leadership that uh, works really well with with a wide variety of different people. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, due to the pandemic, I think all of us have been living in this virtual environment. We're on a Zoom now. And for a couple of years, you know, people weren't coming to the office. We were communicating with each other virtually and still to a certain degree. A lot of our communication is happening virtually, but it's been difficult to communicate in this environment over the last few years. So do you have any tips for our listeners for better communication in a virtual setting? Well, uh, yeah, I do, uh, and, and I uh, um, I understand how difficult it is because a lot of people are not camera comfortable. Right. And you need to be on camera because you need to see each other. That is a very important element of creating trust and bonding between people and, and forcing them to do something that they're not comfortable with. 
you know, you're, you've got a negative going right off the bat, but helping them to understand why it's important. Uh, I think that, that work is focused a lot on work, on what we need to get done, even if it's, you know, whatever group is, is meeting, they, they come together and they, they stay focused on what we need to do. And they've dropped out the social element. So we no longer have, you know, water cooler chats. We no longer meet together for lunch. Mm -hmm. So where are those social connections being built? And as a team leader, you have to you have to think about that. If you're all in a virtual environment or a mixed environment, where and how are your people forming connections? So you either have to build that into your team, or you have to create a separate a meeting that enables you to do that and there are some you know, there are some tricks and tips that you can use you know uh, there you can uh, use some questionnaires and things like that to get people talking you can have you can have a friday sunday uh dialogue where everybody you know comes with a with an ice cream sunday and just talks about their their favorite things um, but i also have seen companies use uh, something like slack where they open up a slack channel and they, they uh, create a, a context for it, like movie lovers or uh, do-it-yourselfers or moms. And people can in the organization can sign into those chat rooms based on their interests and they self-select. So that works really well for Gen Z. And, and then in that, in that chat room, they start forming bonds around their co commonality mm. and their shared interests. And that can then enhance. I think that is absolutely brilliant. And I, I, I wish more organizations would do something like that. That makes a lot of sense. Well, since we're talking about Gen Z, I, I'm thinking about collaboration. How do we enhance collaboration among Gen Z groups when they are generally just known for being very independent and they resist all of these group projects that millennials were fighting so hard to get? Yeah, yeah. One of the things I adore about Gen Z is their uh, the confidence, their self confidence, mm -hmm. and their demand for mutual respect. That's you know, my cool. day. You know, I'm a boomer. My day, you earned it. You earned respect by studying hard, getting good grades, having the experience. Uh, you you demonstrated that you were worth respecting for this particular area that you were in and Gen Z says, uh, uh none of that. No, I'm a person. You, re you respect me because of the value I am as a person. And I adore that. So when working with that group of people, you, you wouldn't want to assume that they would understand the value or the need for collaboration. So you have to be more deliberate about that. You have to help them understand where is their part in this system of work that we are engaged in? And how does that piece, their piece of work, connect and interact with other pieces of work in the organization? And that demonstrates the need for collaboration. So like if you were on a base, if you were playing a baseball game, everybody would know what their roles are. And you wouldn't have to be friends if you were on first base, if that was your role. You wouldn't have to be friends with a third base person, but you'd have to know how to interact with that person so that you could su succeed in uh, achieving your goal. So uh, helping them understand the why and where's their part in it and what piece are you asking them to do uh, with the other people? And that's to get good at that handoff mm. and that interaction. Yeah. Knowing your role, I think that's so critical uh, for success in these teams. I think about uh, DeMar Hamlin. He's a football player for the Buffalo Bills who, uh, you know, recently uh, last season, um, he got hit and he immediately fell down. Uh, it was this whole thing. And uh, but luckily, the paramedics, they were there on the scene and they immediately rushed in. They saw what happened and immediately jumped into action. And everybody who was surrounding him in terms of the paramedics, everybody knew exactly what their role was. And they had all worked together before. So they immediately, without any, you know, skipping a beat, went into exactly what they needed to do in order to help DeMar Hamlin. Uh, survive and sure enough they were very successful and he's going to be going out and playing football this season for the Buffalo 
Buffalo Bills. So, I mean, it just goes to show that if everybody knows what their role is, it's just so much easier to get success and have that familiarity with in working with each other, knowing what the other person is going to do without even saying anything, uh, because they had practiced this over and over and over again. So um, I really like that. That's really good. Um, and, you know, you've used person analysis in various settings. So I'm wondering, do you see any differences in person analysis in terms of how it's used in a corporate setting over, let's say, a college student organization, for example? Mm. Well, the context would be different because they're different. They're interested in different things. Mm -hmm. So when I when I go in and work in a corporate environment, uh, they're interested in teaming. They're interested in uh, uh, developing people. Uh, they're interested in leadership. So we come in framing the work around that. Uh, and and with a sorority and a fraternity, uh, relationship building and career um, could be extremely important as conversation starters. But, but beyond that, the work is exactly the same. We're helping people to understand who they are so that they can use this wonderful resource that they have, which is their personality, how they engage the world. And the personality works on autopilot. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to know how you do or why you do what you do. It, you just automatically do it. But the more you can lift your awareness to why you're doing that and what creates success for you and how does it make you feel when you do that, the more you can start to manage your needs in your environment. And then, of course, the other piece is relationship because, you know, this is why we work in so many environments because it's all about people mm -hmm. and and we help people get along better together to learn how to value and respect each other and and make that you don't i mean you don't not necessarily like each other because you don't need that but you need to understand and value the resources that the other person brings if you want to have a, a really powerful relationship Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see the value of this assessment in so many settings. Um, I think it's wonderful and absolutely right. College students, they're all about their jobs and career. If you start the conversation there, you got it. <laughs> like they're <laughs> yours. You can do whatever you like. Um, that's great. And I saw that you also have this certification program for corporate practitioners and independent consultants. What types of people should look into your certification program? Well, that's an interesting question, because if you were to go into corporate America and ask that question, HR and learning communities and coaches and internal coaches would stand up and say they are the ones that should handle um, it to be certified. And in their hands, it's it's a it's an absolutely wonderful tool. But a, a lot of leaders have come to us and have wanted to get certified because certification is a deeper dive and they want to use it in a personal way in their leadership to be better coaches, mentors, to understand how to better empower people, uh, how to help help them learn what they need to know. We also have individuals who are just deeply curious and they come in for certification again for a deeper dive because they understand the value that it provides them in their life. And if I just think about myself, you know, when I first came to person analysis almost 30 years ago, um, I, I took this framework and I started to look at um, television programs. I remember ER was on at the time. And so here you've got this collapsed environment, the emergency room, you've got drama like crazy coming in, and you've got these very different personality styles that approach that. And it was an incredible amount of learning for me to see how people relate in the same environment and, and how they do it differently and how they can be successful in doing it differently. So as, as an individual, I learned how to value different behaviors, different approaches, because uh, you know, just watching a, a, a dramatic television program uh, using this framework. Yeah, 
that's so fascinating that leaders are coming to you for the certification. Um, yeah, I was kind of curious to see what the kinds of people, walks of life uh, would come to look to be certified. And I could see how it would be valuable um, to just about anybody, not just, uh, you know, the coaches and the consultants, but even people who just want to be better at their jobs. And, yes. uh, you know, so I think that's really fascinating. Um, I love all of this. All right. So listen, we love good food here at the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. Yes. And I know you live in Houston, Texas, where which has some phenomenal, phenomenal restaurants. So I need a recommendation. Where should I go for a great meal in Houston? Okay. Well, I'm I'm a little bit um, uh, I'm I'm gluten free, so yeah. I'm more limited than other people in their choices. <laughs> but we have great gluten free places. And first of all, I recommend Manil, the Manil Museum, and they, they have a bistro there. Absolutely fabulous food. Um, Ruggles Black uh, is a, 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 a the Ruggles family, which has a number of restaurants here. Ruggles Black, I like. And then if you like Greek food, Mediterranean food, George's Greek Grill. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Something for everybody in those recommendations, Adrian. I appreciate all of that. I'll definitely go and check that out the next time I'm in Houston. So, all right. So if executives... Well, you call me when you come to Houston. Of and we'll course I'm going to call you. Let's go and have some lunch. I think that's fantastic. All right. So if the executives, if board members or college campuses, if they're interested in your consulting and speaking services, where should they go in order to connect with you? Well, you can go to our website, personalysis.com, uh, but you can reach us with hello at personalysis.com. And if you want to reach me personally, it's adrian at personalysis.com. That's perfect. All right. Very good. And so, of course, the uh, the name of the company is spelled P-E-R-S-O-N-A-L-Y-S-I-S. So go and check that out. Go and check out everything that they offer. Make sure you contact Adrian because I know she would absolutely love to work with your executives, your board members, college campuses, consulting, speaking. She is ready to go. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing all this great information with us today. Thank you, Michael. It has been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And to our listeners, if you enjoyed this talk with Adrian, make sure that you like it. Make sure that you share it on social media with other college students who need to hear this. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.